Hi there, and welcome back to our course on understanding medications. We're continuing our discussions of pharmacokinetics, which includes the absorption, distribution, metabolism, and excretion of drugs. And right now, we'll be talking about the distribution of drugs. We finished our last video as the orally consumed medication was going down to the microvilli of the small intestine and being absorbed in the microvilli. And from there, it's going to go into the hepatic portal venous system. We'll discuss more of that when we talk about metabolism, but it's important to note that right now. Orally consumed medications will go through what we call the hepatic first pass mechanism, or in other words, go through the liver before it's distributed to other tissues or any other part of the body. Oftentimes, before the drug even gets to the liver, it acts as a protein carrier molecule. Many of our drugs are carried by proteins, such as albumin or the globulins, especially if the drug is highly lipophilic, or in other words, fat-soluble. Each drug will have a different affinity to that protein carrier molecule, and as such, each drug will have a certain percentage that is normally bound to proteins. And importantly, it's only the unbound portion of the drug that can be metabolized, and it's only the unbound portion of the drug that can exert its effect. And as you hear that, you may be thinking, well, if 80% is bound to the proteins, then the 80% is going to be ineffective, right? Because, as you just said, the unbound portion of the drug is the only portion that can be metabolized or exert its effect. But you have to remember that this binding is going to establish what's called a chemical equilibrium. So, for instance, if the drug is in the liver and 80% is bound to the proteins and 20% is free, the 20% that's free is going to go into the hepatocytes to be metabolized. But what does that do to the percentage that is bound in the blood? Well, that raises the percentage, doesn't it? But that chemical equilibrium must be reestablished at that point. So some of the drug is going to disassociate from the protein carriers right then. And in the end, all of the medication that's reversibly bound to the proteins will eventually disassociate from that protein carrier and be available to perform its actions or be metabolized. A highly bound drug, however, may take longer for that to happen. The other important concept about distribution is the way in which the drug is distributed among the four major body compartments, the blood, the fat, the extracellular fluid, and the intracellular fluid. And as a drug enters a compartment, for instance, the blood, the unbound drug begins to distribute into other body compartments, and once again, establishing an equilibrium between those body compartments until the drug reaches equilibrium throughout the body. In the quiz on this lesson, we're going to take a couple clinical scenarios that are going to reinforce these concepts. We'll see you there.